Today's sermon, I'd like to speak about the gospel that we have given us today, and that is the the event of our Lord's transfiguration. And there are a couple points I just want to bring out about this, this particular gospel, and that is, first of all, the choice of our Lord in taking these three apostles with him up in the mountain and excluding the other apostles. These three, Peter, James, and John, our Lord were had set them up as his, I might say, his special favorites. They, Those three were taken with Jesus, took them when he raised the daughter of Jairus to life. These three he took with him up to the mountain here at the Transfiguration. And it was later that our Lord took them with him in the Garden of Olives. He took them apart away from the other apostles, when our Lord went through his, that started his passion with the agony in the garden. These three had, well, proclaimed, proclaimed a greater love and devotion to Christ, and so our Lord expected more from them. James and John, the sons of thunder, who, who were very zealous in proclaiming Christ and spreading the gospel, and Peter, of course, was the leader of the apostles. So our Lord was taking them apart here and was transfigured before them where his divinity shone forth. He took those three apart in order to prepare them for his what they would witness in the Garden of Olives, his bitter sufferings that would start there. They would These three would see Christ in weakness, in suffering, in his passion. So our Lord wanted to, before he put them through that, to give them a taste of his divinity, of his, of his glory. So that's why they had that, made that special, special selection of these three. And I kind of just want to focus on this, this preparation that our Lord made with these apostles. That in our life, We all undergo crosses and we undergo um, good things that happen. We undergo um, crosses and tribulations, but we also have many blessings and graces that are bestowed on us. And sometimes we, we witness the hand of providence in such a way that we say there's no way this could have happened without God. There's no way this could have happened but for divine providence. And these little graces, these little mini miracles that we sometimes witness are like this transfiguration. They're those little signs, those little wonders that God sprinkles throughout our life, but for a good reason. F- to show forth his, you know, his, his power, his divinity, of course, but also to prepare us for those times when it's not so glorious, it's not so wonderful, it is a little bit more dreary, and our faith is put to a test. Always, there are ups and downs in our lives. And always, God has a purpose for them. There's always something to gain. There's a plan for those things. All of the ups and downs. And it's for us to be sure that we look at those circumstances from the eyes of faith. Even in the dreariest, darkest day, remembering that God is in control. That this is God's plan. There is some reason for this right now. Why we're going through that. Why he's allowing it. And then in those happier times, there's more glorious times. When everything seems to be going right and everything's wonderful and the sun is shining and there's no clouds in the sky. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Those are those times where we say, God is good. This is a, this is a blessing. How is this going to help me? When, when those clouds do come. And so in our lives, we're, we want to make sure we have our eyes open and we look at things through the eyes of faith so that we take those everything in stride and benefit from it. Everything that God sends our way is meant to benefit us. And a really good example of this profiting from the ups and downs of life is, well, today's saint, St. Patrick. When he was about 16 years old, he, was, he didn't really care about his faith. It didn't really matter too much, 
too much to him. And he was captured by pirates. I'm sure you know this story. He was captured by these Irish pirates or invaders or whatever else and taken back as a slave. And what we would say from a natural point of view is the worst possible thing that could have ever happened to him ended up being the greatest grace for him. Because through his captivity, through the six years that he was a captive, his faith suddenly meant something to him. God meant something to him. He learned how to pray really well. He got to a point in his captivity, being a slave, when he was out working in the fields or shepherding sheep, whatever, that he would pray hundreds of prayers every single day because, well, he had nothing else. He was a slave. So his relationship with God grew immensely. Where He would pray throughout the night. He would give up his sleep because he wanted to pray. He wanted to spend that time with God. And also, in the long run, he learned the language. He learned the customs of the people. He learned all about the Irish, living there for six years. And that's what enabled him when he came back to be one of the reasons why he was so successful as a preacher, why he converted all of Ireland. Obviously, it was his sanctity, his holiness, and God's grace, but also what he learned while he was there in captivity. He knew the language. He knew the customs. He knew the people. So from this awful, terrible event in his life, being captured, made a slave, God brought about, brought about incredible good. But if he hadn't profited it from it, if he hadn't let his faith guide him in how he handled that situation, Ireland might not have ever been converted, and all of the good that came from that wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. So God has a plan for everything, for everyone, all the time. And it's, we need to make sure that we have our eyes open to see it, to look for the indications of how we can profit spiritually by it, what God is trying to tell us. And this is, this, this um, gospel is very appropriate for the second Sunday of Lent. As last Sunday, the gospel is about the temptations of our Lord, how our Lord underwent this temptation and how he conquered those temptations. And he showed us the example of fasting, of penance, of prayer as a, as a very important method of overcoming temptation. The 40, our Lord's 40 days of fast is where we get our 40 days of Lent. And so that kind of set the mood for Lent today after having one week of the Lenten fasts and penances, the church reminds us, look, look at the glory of, the, of Christ. This is the whole point. The whole point of Lent and the penances and sacrifices is not just to make you miserable or to give you something to complain about or something to whatever. It's not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. Because it's through the passion and the sufferings of Christ that he merited, that, that, that the resurrection came about. It's through the, the cross, through penance and mortification, that our own spiritual glorification, our freedom from sin, freedom of the sons of God, that's how that comes about. So this is meant to be an encouragement for us to persevere in our penance, in our, the spirit of mortification, because of the end, the purpose of it, is to be like Christ. To be glorified. We, we, we don't live a good and holy life. Then when, our, when death comes, we will not rise in glory. We will be punished. And so we need to do penance now. As our Lord said, unless you do penance, you shall likewise perish. Carry the cross now. Endure this, the, the crosses, the tribulations, the penances now. So that we may rise with him. And so that... Let that be an encouragement to us during this Lenten season to persevere in our penances, not to, not to slacken off, but to be generous. Because the reward is more, more than we can possibly imagine. And that we have to make it a real penance, a real Lent. Really mortify ourselves. Otherwise, it's not really a sacrifice. It's not really penance. So let's take encouragement from this. And let's, throughout this, the rest of Lent, be generous with God and focus Yes, 
on our Lord's transfiguration, yes, the glory of the resurrection, focuses that on the end, where we're trying to get to, but more importantly, focus on the sufferings of Christ. If we need motivation to do penance, look at Christ scourged, crowned with thorns. Look at Christ hanging on the cross, covered with wounds, bleeding is to the last, his last drop of blood for love of us. If we really meditate on that, if we read about it, if we think about it, that will enkindle in us a love of him and a desire to give up something for love of him. That will fan the flames of fervor. It will strengthen us to carry out faithfully our resolutions to do penance and to mortify ourselves for the love of Christ. So let us, I just want to encourage you and remind myself, let's be sure to be generous during this Lent. Be generous with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.